Hi, Kangaroos. It's Miss Kelsey back again. Um, I just wanted to go over your next lesson plans uh, for Thursday, uh, March 26th. Um, still on Arctic Polar Week, um, but we're going to do some more fun things today. For language arts today, you've got um, those sight words that we sent you last week in the additional language arts handouts. Um, those are, you know, in different lists and you can choose whichever list you want. We cycle through them pretty often. Um, and one of the best ways to solidify sight words, because you have to kind of know them like this, because they're sight words that, you know, kiddos can't just sound out normally the way they would another word. That's why they're tricky. That's why they're no by sight words. And, um, so one of the best ways is to just keep writing them. Sometimes you want to write them in pencil and then write over them with paint. Or in this case, if you have those, um, hole reinforcement stickers, they look like little snowballs. That was one way we used to do this, where we would put the stickers over the words once we wrote the words. You could also use puffy paint if you have it at home or just regular paint, gel pens, whatever they love writing in would really be a great way to just reinforce some of those. Another suggestion would be, you know, to add cotton balls over the words with glue. Um, so that's language arts. For cognitive development today, you're gonna to be um, comparing yourselves, my little friends, to different kinds of penguins. All the penguins are different heights and different weights, and I gave you a couple links so that you can find the stats on the penguins. I resent you the penguin height comparison um, picture, and I also made a penguin comparison chart so you can practice um, you know, comparing those, using those comparing words. I am heavier than a penguin. I am um, a penguin is this many pounds. I am this many pounds. Uh, same for height. A penguin is a blink penguin because you put in the type of penguin. A blink, this penguin is so tall, etc. Um, give that a whirl. It'll be fun. Um, for science and nature studies today, you're going to be participating in a little steam challenge where you just get to build snowflakes using whatever materials you have around the house. Um, I sent a link to an example of different things that were found in one house to do this. You can use Q-tips, popsicle sticks, yarn, sequins, pipe cleaners. Um, really just open it up to whatever you have in the house and let them build. They get to do it however they want. Um, be important to try to point out the snowflake's six-fold radial symmetry and that they have those six points and that it's like a mirror if you look at them. Um, but all of those will be really fun. I would love to see what kind of snowflakes um, all you kiddos come up with. Uh, for creative art today, um, one of the coolest things in um, the polar world is called the Northern Lights. And it's um, sun flares that react a certain way um, when you're at really high poles and you can see these beautiful sort of floating and dancing green to blue to purple, yellow, like all cool colors in the sky. Um, it's really beautiful. Ms. Kelsey and Mr. Colin tried to see them in Alaska. They'll do phone calls for you where they'll, they'll wake you up at two in the morning to say, hey, someone spotted it. You know, go outside and check it out. Um, but for whatever reason, we didn't get a chance to really see it. So shucks on that one. But they're beautiful. And one of the best ways to recreate them would be using watercolors. Um, stick to those cool colors like greens, purples, blues. Um, and if you have thicker paper, like construction paper, always better for watercolor. Um, but give that a shot. I attached some pictures so you can see those as well. Um, let's see. Music and movement today. You're just going to build a cool obstacle course in your house to get ready to be moving around. Um, some ideas are making tunnels with sheets and chairs, make a snow fort, try to figure out how you would make a kayak and use a broom or something as a paddle. Um, you can use balls as penguin eggs and you got to get from point A to point B. Um, slide on your bellies, use uh, blocks as skis. Sometimes when we're in the room, if you literally stand on these two wooden blocks, you can kind of skate around the room and that's a lot of fun too. Um, totally up to the kiddos and up to you guys. Get creative with what you have. Um, social science today would be, um, we're gonna, ooh, game of Pictionary. This is also something we're gonna try to do on our Zoom meeting tomorrow, where we'll try to draw and see if the kiddos can guess what animal we're drawing. And, Shout that out. Um, cool time to review those vocabulary words, those Arctic animals, and have a little fun at your house tonight or tomorrow during the day or later as you see fit. Uh, motor skills. You're going to be playing a game of pin the horn on the narwhal. 
So uh, the way we do this is we have big butcher paper, but you can put little pieces of paper together to make a bigger window and draw like a whale shape and then make a cut out a horn and, you know, just like pin the tail on the donkey, spin around a couple of times blindfolded and then try to put that horn where it goes. Um, this has been really funny in the past, so enjoy that one. Last but not least, computer lab today, we're going back to mountain habitats, again, using Plum Landing, because it's one of the best ones for, um, you know, animal resources. Mountain Scramble is the name of the game, and a lot of it has to do with balancing um, the ecosystem. You need enough of this to feed this, and then once enough of that to feed this animal, um, deals with food chains as well. So enjoy that. I hope you enjoy your Thursday, guys. Have a wonderful time.